Ukrainian military expert Ivan Kirichevsky has stated that the Russians were actively preparing for an offensive on the Sumy region with plans to advance further into Ukrainian territory. The occupying Russian army indeed has planned to launch another offensive on the Sumy region. It was only a matter of time. Moreover, the Russians were not just preparing to attack us in the Sumy region and stretch our forces. It threatened to collapse the entire front. Regarding the informational and emotional aspects of the Ukrainian armed forces operations in the Kursk region, we have been following a middle scenario for the second year in a row. On the one hand, we are not doing as well as we would like, and on the other hand, we are performing better than we could have. Therefore, it would be ideal if we had enough forces and resources for massive operations in the Kursk region and large-scale control operations in the east. However, we have been forced to operate with limited forces in the Kursk region, Kirichevsky explained on Espresso TV. According to the expert, the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region has made it impossible for the Russian army to advance into the Sumy region. If our troops had not started operating in Russia's Kursk region, we would now be discussing how far Russian tanks are from Kyiv. This was literally the price of the issue. Our people seem to understand that they shouldn't read Russian media, but they do. Reading Russian media during the war is almost like eating scraps from the ground. What is my point? In the first week of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in Kursk, there was no official qualification for these actions, and that's right. Our people went to read the good Russian media and got the impression that there were no serious Russian groups and no fortifications in the Kursk region, only Russian boys in panties, standing with welcome posters. That's why there were discussions about whether it was necessary to divert our forces and resources to this operation. A 30,000 strong grouping of Russian troops could have advanced on Sumy. If it weren't for the preventative operation of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kursk region, we would now be discussing Sumy as a zone of active combat operations, including the storming of Sumy and similar scenarios. He added, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov on Friday met with his Lebanese counterpart Abdullah Abu Habib on the sidelines of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly. Lavrov expressed his condolences and solidarity with Lebanese people following recent deadly strikes. The two ministers discussed the situation in the Middle East and Israel strikes on Lebanon. Lavrov also held bilateral talks with Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Arachi. I thought I wanted to brief you. Express our condolences and solidarity with Lebanese people, and we'll be, of course, very interested to get your assessments. We wanted to, wanted to come and brief you of what was happening on our. <laughs> Buildings have been reduced to rubble as Israel intensifies its attack on Lebanon, striking numerous places including the capital. One of the hardest hit areas is Nabati in southern Lebanon. Israel dramatically intensified its airstrikes in Lebanon this week, saying it is determined to put an end to more than 11 months of Hezbollah fire into its territory. The escalated campaign has killed more than 720 people in Lebanon, including dozens of women and children, according to health ministry statistics. The United Nations said the fighting has displaced 211,000 people, including 85,000 now staying in public schools and other shelters. Airstrikes have forced 20 primary healthcare centers to shut down and disrupted access to clean water for nearly 300,000 people.